Uh, my name is Adrian David Giok and I am director of the Mixed Reality Lab in the National University of Singapore and also uh, we have a joint lab with Keio University in Tokyo which is called the CUTE Centre and it stands for Connected Ubiquitous Technology for Embodiments and we're basically doing uh, new works in the area of communication media. Became a professor in the university. Uh, normally they would do very narrow research, you know, uh, on some very technical aspect or something. But, I, but I, th at that time I really realised there's a revolution happening and the revolution which is happening is that for the first time ever we have uh, ability to communicate all over the globe 24 hours a day and uh, so the internet is, is, at first was seen more as a, a business tool, uh, it's going to change the, change the nature of business but actually what happened is it changed the whole nature of the society. Um, we've never had in the whole human history such an ability to communicate. So I think the inspiration really comes from the childhood and also uh, you know, r really being, uh, thinking deeply about what is the nature of communication and society and, and how it will change in the future. Um, and also I think watching a lot of movies when I was, when I was young, you know, so I think uh, uh, my generation, I think, you know, because I'm, I'm 39 now, so I'm 40, I think we, we, we were kind of inspired by the Star Wars, this kind of movies which came out, the original Star Wars. And, you know, uh, so uh, when I saw the Princess Leia hologram, I thought, okay, that's what I, I want to do that when I, when I grow up. So I think all these things uh, become part of the inspiration. It's very difficult to, to you know, pick exactly one, one point for the inspiration. But I think it's, m more importantly, I think, uh, to do as many things as possible when you're young, as a, as, as a child and teenager, have as many different uh, experiences in different fields. And this will help in the future to make the inspirations. And then now, I think, uh, now kind of reaching the middle of life, uh, or maybe in, near the end of life, I'm not sure, <laughs> so, but depending. But now I think it's more important to, uh, for me to help ins inspire the next generation. So, you know, I have the uh, uh, PhD students in my lab. So instead of directly telling them uh, my own ideas now, what I want to do is work together with them and get them to think of, you know, the process of making new ideas is critical and that's more sustainable. And I think, so what I, what I, one thing I tell to my students say, don't do the same as me, shock me, you know, because so if, if you shock me then it's got something new, right? And I think that's very important. It's, it's so, uh, you know, the, uh, maybe the uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, before this era of mobile phone and email and Twitter, now everything is so fast, so people don't have time to think about writing a very deep message. Many people in society would go to learn how to do poetry. Even, even you know, in the Asian culture, there's so many different kinds of uh, poetry, you know, uh, that you can see in the history. I, I think a lot, of, a lot of the young people have lost, lost that. Is, uh, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to, to lose some good things. So I think what we can do is we can, we can look at culture and computing together and use the new media to reintroduce, reintroduce the traditional media but in a, in a new way that is relevant to the society. So young people now, they, they, they really like to Twitter and send messages from their phone, uh, chat to each other. And I thought, can we do that? Can, can we take that? Really like to express themselves. Uh, you know, Andy Warhol said, uh, that you know, in the future everyone had their 15 minutes of fame and I think this really happened already, right? So, so uh, people, people feel that their identity is related to their public identity, you know, so your blog and your Twitter and your Facebook is, is, is somehow in a very important part of the modern identity. So with the Commerce Centre you've got the screen on the outside of the building and then inside in the lobby it's kind of running on the pillars, on the ceiling and at the cafe there's a uh, you know, big screen. So people can send a message and straight away so many people can see it, hundreds of people. And because that building is, is in, you know, downtown Seoul, uh, they've, they've, people can feel a form of public expression. And somehow this is a public need now uh, that we before had just designed for, you know, a single screen in a public area. But seeing it now, you know, running on the walls and running on the outside of the building, 
this gives a this gives a different feature for the work. Uh, the, the, so somehow there's more meaning that when people can send their message, uh, have see the see their poem in huge letters running across the wall, and then they have have a satisfaction, and many people can see it. So I think that's basically the next stage of the work. And I think in general, what I want to look at now is not just the logical communication, but I think what's so important for human life is the uh, not just logical, but the illogical, and also not just the conscious, but the subconscious. And we need to look at the subconscious communication and the uh, kind of illogical communication or emotional communication to make our uh, human communication much more natural, much more deeper uh, through the internet. And that way we can go to the next, next generation of uh, digital communication, which is experience. Yeah. We have the four different screens, and I think this gives a very unique uh, opportunity for the artists. So, uh, as I mentioned before, we only conceptualized of the poetry mix-up as a kind of, you know, traditional, uh, as, uh, you know, rectangular screen. And we didn't really think about that this could be a, a new kind of public display, which is going all over the physical space. I think that's what I felt, that the, the, the beauty of the, the screens at the Como is that they're really intertwined with the public space. It's not just a screen on the wall, but it's running on the outside, it's running on the, on the pillar, it's running on the ceiling even. And this really gives uh, a feeling that it's, it is, it is uh, enmeshed in the daily life of the, of the people. And you see the, uh, many people walking on the outside on the road, and people having their lunch at the cafe, uh, people walking to and from their office, and this is part of their experience. And so the feeling that, uh, so in our particular work with the poetry mix-up, the feeling that people can send the message and then see the poetry, you know, running across the, the building, I think that gives a different aspect to the work that we didn't really experience before. So because before we were thinking that um, the poetry would be very calm. So you have a kind of calm display and, you know, uh, people can see the poetry and see some calm animation, some birds and this kind of thing. But we had to recreate new displays for the, for the other screens, the lo longer screens and the kind of ticker tape screens. And so we had to rethink the design. And suddenly we thought, yes, poetry doesn't have to necessarily be calm. It can be like a combination of the CNN, you know, CNN, you've got this uh, news going across the bottom. But imagine that is poetry, you know, and that's what I was thinking. Calm and slow, it can be fast, and, and that, maybe that is even more in tune with the, with the fast pace of the information age. You know, people want to see the poetry run across the wall, you know, run across the ceiling. Um, I think we, we gave good opportunity, and also we, we had to very think carefully about the, the design. How do you design for thin screens? Obviously you can't do uh, the kind of uh, graphics and animation that you do on this kind of normal, um, you know, HD display or etc. So we redesigned the graphics in such a way that it can be meaningful in a very long area. And what we did is kind of like a kind of bubble, bubbles, bubbles running along the the the, the screens in a very long way. And so it kind of gives a feeling like in childhood when you blow the bubbles and they stream out. And I think this is kind of like a streaming out onto the display. Uh, so. So I think this is a very good opportunity for any artist to uh, rethink their work, kind of almost reboot their work, but in a positive way, uh, it can give new inspiration for the artist. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for the great opportunity uh, and uh, for showing the work in Como. Thank you.